And Justice 2 is right around the corner. If you're looking to have Batman punch Green Lantern in the junk, well, we here at Game Ranks have 10 things you need to know about the game. Starting off with number 10, let's talk about the multiverse gameplay mode. Aside from the single player campaign, split screen, and online multiplayer, multiverse mode is a game mode you may find yourself spending quite a bit of time with, especially if you're playing often alone. Multiverse is similar to tower mode from Mortal Kombat X, if you're familiar. Here though, you select a planet from the main screen and it puts you in a linear gauntlet where you square up against predetermined lists of combatants. The sets of enemies have a little paragraph story behind it. They even have their own skins and colors to represent that story. Look, it's not as fleshed out as story mode because this mode is all about gameplay and fighting more than anything, but it still looks to be a nice addition. If anything, it's worth it for the rewards and gear alone. And at number 9, for the technical folks, you need to know every character now has an evasive roll move option. It'll cost you one meter segment, but instead of the standard forward dash, you'll have a fairly lengthy roll maneuver that makes you fully invincible for up to 16 frames. It may seem like a cheap way to skate out of getting hit, but by rolling forward at such a distance, you're able to get through many of those moves that players spam to keep distance from the opposing fighter. Now you can actually really close that distance without taking a hit. It's a pretty advantageous move, but it'll cost you. There's also a new air recovery that'll cost you two dashes of the meter. It's expensive, but getting stuck in an air juggle is usually worse. It does seem pretty nice to have that option now. And at number 8, you should be prepared. The game's general pace is much faster this time around. Netherrealm has actually significantly increased the walk speed for all characters. This doesn't sound like a big deal, but if you remember Gods Among Us, you probably remember some of the frustratingly slow walk speed for the normal characters that didn't have superhuman speed capabilities. You probably remember often resorting to always jumping and dashing around. Well, Netherrealm took notice and decided to generally speed up the game by increasing movement speeds. For some, that sounds like a change that's going to make the game instantly much harder, faster, and, and more difficult to follow, but to most, it's really a balancing issue that's going to fairly increase the challenge here. And at number 7, let's talk about the gear system. That gear system was designed to encourage players to develop unique personal playstyles and to incentivize players to really feel rewarded and keep playing. Progression systems are good for that, and Netherrealm wanted to try it. The more you fight, the more of these armor pieces you unlock and earn. Armor pieces have visual differences and stat differences, allowing you to build your characters to really cater to your playstyle. It's fun, and it works well, and may even be balanced enough, but I have a hard time imagining the hardcore fighting community really embracing this. However, it's very important to know that there is an ability to turn off the gear stuff, especially for use in tournaments, where you would imagine competitive people would want it completely tight, balanced as possible, and truly skill-based. And at number 6, let's acknowledge everybody's favorite word, DLC. Expect 9 or more characters to be added to the roster over time. Netherrealm has stated that they want to be more aggressive and support the game over a longer period of time for this release. Their previous game, Mortal Kombat X, had 8 characters added, and the previous Injustice had 6. Heads of development at Netherrealm were quoted saying to expect that pattern to continue with Injustice 2. They've already announced the first group of DLC fighters, including Sub-Zero, Starfire, and the fan favorite, Red Hood. We'll talk more about how you can get those guys at another point. But at number 5, bouncing off a of DLC, let's get this out of the way, there are cosmetic microtransactions. None really give you an advantage in game, but you buy and spend these source crystals as currency to unlock costume color shaders, alternate premiere skins, and some visual armor changes. Thankfully, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of stat stuff involved with the microtransactions. There will also be a system in place to spend source crystals to quote unquote transform your gear, allowing you to match the stats you want with the specific armor piece you want. It's nice that it adds another layer of customization here, but it, it does suck that it could potentially involve real world money. And at number 4, Injustice is all about the characters, and everyone wants to know all about them. So far, there are 32 confirmed characters that we know of at the time of this video, each with multiple skins. There are also technically more characters playable through the Premiere Skins option that changes existing characters into other similar characters in the DCU with their own look, voices, and dialogue. It seems to be a nice little touch and really extends the roster just a bit. There's a lot of returning characters, mostly the bigger heavy hitter fan favorites, and some creative new additions and returning characters that look slightly different, like the Joker. I am getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I am looking forward to seeing in the comments who your favorite characters are. Leave us a top five or something. And at number three, you need to know that there is going to be an esports initiative right now. Will Injustice 2 become a full-fledged popular esports game? We don't know, but they're certainly going to try. Warner Brothers announced the Injustice 2 Championship Series Global Esports Initiative. This is basically like a series that will offer amateur and professional players in North America, Europe, and Latin America to compete in different programs and fighting game tournaments to get a chunk of a $600,000 prize pool. While it doesn't seem like a big deal for all gamers, for some, this could provide some good entertainment and maybe even something to strive to winning. 
And at number two, here's a quick story primer for the uninitiated. Following the events of Injustice Gods Among Us, which had a pretty awesome story and comic series, Superman was defeated and held in a jail cell that can actually suppress his powers. Injustice 2 deals with Batman and his faction working to essentially put the world back together again after all the chaos that ensued, while also warring with Gorilla Grodd's new group of villains called The Society. Judging from the trailers, things get worse once Brainiac invades and threatens the fate of the entire world. And with all that happening and Brainiac being one of Superman's greatest villains, you can obviously guess it'll be time for Superman to make a return. There's a bit more to it and even some nuance. I'm definitely glossing over a lot, but that's kind of the gist of it. And at number one, let's get some housekeeping out of the way real quick. Injustice 2 is going to release on PS4 and Xbox One on May 16th in North America. And of course, it gets needlessly complicated with a bunch of different editions. There's the standard edition, and then there's the digital deluxe edition that gives you three DLC fighters and a shader. If you're really feeling nasty, there's the ultimate edition, which gives you nine DL fighters, three premiere skins, and more shaders if you're really willing to break the bank. It doesn't seem like a PC version is dropping in the near future, which is a shame, but players have been holding out to hope. The original Gods of Among Us eventually got a PC release a few months later, so we're really hoping that the same thing happens here. But those were 10 things to catch you up on Injustice 2. Whether you're a hardcore fan or a casual fan, we want to hear what you think down in the comments. What are you looking forward to the most? Are you looking forward to having The Flash punch Sub-Zero in the face? Or are you a more hardcore fan who is looking forward to the little changes and movesets here and there? Let's talk about anything Injustice 2 down in the comments. We definitely want to hear from you guys. You probably know, though, clicking that like button helps us out a ton, and we really do appreciate it. And if you're new, subscribing is a good idea because we put out stuff like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.